Straight Up Here Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Willie Morales. And on today's show, I got Rayshawn Thrower. Did I pronounce your last name uh, right, Sean? Yes, you did. All right. And Arnold Wapples Jr.? Correct. Did I got that name right? All right. <laughs> cool. Let me tell you a little bit about Rayshawn. Rayshawn attended Long Island University in Brooklyn, New York, where he initially learned enough about real estate to know that he had a future in it. Early on in his working career, Rayshawn was determined to grow his savings in order to make his mark in real estate investing world. Rayshawn began investing in real estate education in 2008 when he purchased his first investment property. Let me tell you a little bit about Arnhem. Arnhem attended Old Dominion, Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia, and earned his master's degree in business administration. He had a successful career as a business banker at J.P. Morgan Chase, which allowed him to see the inner workings and bank accounts of many companies to determine what kind of business he wanted to pursue for himself. Gentlemen, welcome to Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. How are you? Doing well. Well, I met these guys, uh, if I remember correctly, Sean, I met you at uh, Kyle's event, which is the Flippers and Funders event. And I think the same thing with you, right, Arnold? I met you guys there, uh, what was that, maybe five, four or five months ago, give or take? It was, I, I believe, the last month before Corona really happened. Uh, so that yeah, was February. February, January, February, yeah. So I've been trying yeah. to get these guys on for the last couple of months. So, you know, <laughs> they decided, okay, he, enough begging. All right, we'll go on. <laughs> so anyway, so let me start with you, Sean. Um, what was it about, and, and, and the same thing to Arnhem, what was it about real estate that drew you in? What, did you always have the entrepreneurial spirit growing up, or, or that's something that came later in life? And the same thing, same question for you, Arnhem. Well, it was a combination of people. It was uh, my, my childhood friend growing up. He would always talk about how he wanted to own a, uh, an apartment building. And then uh, my, my now wife, her mom, she owns, uh, what is it, uh, 8, 11, 14 apartments in Brooklyn. Okay. And, you know, that plus uh, everyone needs somewhere to live. Every business pretty much needs somewhere to, uh, to house itself. So everything revolves around real estate. So you figure everything needs its place to be. So let me get in there and make the money. Right. And Arnhem, the same question. Like, th was this something that you always wanted to do? Were you always entrepreneurial growing up or... You know, like me, which came much, much later in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've always been entrepreneurial. I, I started out uh, very young selling uh, codes for games, uh, you know, when Mortal Kombat came out and sure. everyone wanted to know the codes. And uh, even purses, I used to sell purses uh, from Canal Street and sell it to my mom's friends. And the entrepreneurial bug hit me very early on, but I had no idea about real estate. And I really, it really didn't kick in for me until I worked at J.P. Morgan, where I, I found that the businesses that were really making the, the big bucks was insurance and real estate. Mm. And I, I knew enough that in real estate had a huge hurdle to get into it, where you had to have a, not, a lot of knowledge, you had to have a lot of money, and I, I just didn't think I was prepared to get into that. But I still wanted to learn about it. I still wanted to get it eventually get in there. And, you know, I started with uh, educating myself, uh, you know, and this was about 2010, uh, educating myself on the process. How do you get into it? How do you learn? And been a student of the game since then. Right. And but you, at, at that time, too, you, you purchased your first property um, around that same time, 2009, 2010. Was it around that time you purchased your first property? Uh, that was Rashawn. Oh, that was Rashawn. Okay. So, you know, the thing is, you know, for you guys, and maybe you could answer this and then we get to the topic at hand. A lot of people I know get the education, um, but it feels like they, they need another step and another step and then they become hoarders of educational <laughs> cor courses. Uh, Sean and, and Arno, I want you guys to touch base on this, but Sean, let me start with you. Um, do you see that happening in, in your circle where people become hoarders of, of education material? Like they need that one more step. Mm, I, know, I don't know how to structure a deal. Let me do it. You know, let me get this course. And all of a sudden they're spending twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on a course. Um, can you talk about that? Like, is it the fear that, um, that some of these people might have of, of stepping up to the, up to the plate, so to speak? Um, I'll answer it first. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So actually the way 
that our education system is set up is that you're always taught that you don't know what to do. Right. right? And also you're taught that failure, you know, if you mess up at something, you're a failure. And the only way to get better is to fail. You know, right. the, uh, when you exercise, the way that you get better is that you tear your muscles and then they build up stronger. However, we've built this fear in our mind of we, we're, we're afraid to mess up. You know, it, remember in school growing up, if you got the answer wrong, you were a complete failure. You know, Very all the kids would laugh at you and everything like that. But um, in baseball, if you're a failure, 70% uh, uh, of the time, you're a Hall of Famer. <laughs> so true, you know? so true, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, and in real estate, you know, it, it, just in business in general, you, you, you can't be afraid to fail. And uh, you can't be afraid to pull the trigger. Ready, fire, aim. Right. With the proper research. <laughs> <laughs> on them, do, uh, do you do you like what's your uh, take on that too? That because, like I said, I've I've met people that, they, for me, if you're gonna buy a thirty-five, forty, fifty thousand dollar course that covers eighty percent of real estate investing, mm -hmm. I, I to me, I think you're you're overwhelmed because all right, do I go wholesaling? Do I go tax liens? Do I go fix and flip? Do I go rental? I, it it seems that nobody's looking to get that one niche yeah start and then go to tax liens or whatever are you finding that out also with let's say your contacts and newbies and all that because it seems that nobody some people just don't want to pull the trigger they want to get that one more course that one more piece of education let me let me do the youtube series etc yeah yeah uh th there's there's a overabundance of knowledge in the world right now in terms of real estate as well there's so much information uh from books to seminars to uh gurus and everyone else there, there's so much information but i think what people really have been looking for is wisdom you know they, they can you can have a whole bunch of facts but without having the wisdom of how to put this deal together you uh, hesitate to j act on any of the information you have, although the information may be amazing. So uh, with, as far as the information goes, I can speak for how I did it. You know, I, I read the books, I took the classes, but I also put it into my personal system that made sure that I acted on it every single day. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of doing something, even something really small, every day will lead you forward. So um, it, it's, it's a matter of seeing what you want, knowing what you want. If you want to get into real estate, knowing that, hey, I want to own a property and I want it to cash flow. I, in fact, I want to own 10 properties, dream big and go from there. So with that big dream, now you can break it down and say, what, what's one thing I can do this year in order to make that happen? Right. And I, I think too many people get caught up in all of the things that you have to do instead of focusing on one thing that they can really get done that will lead them closer to where they need to be. And uh, as far as Sean and I, how we've been successful in businesses, we take one thing every day, doesn't matter how small it is, right. but one thing we focus on is going to get us towards our weekly goal. And that one thing that's going to get us toward our, that monthly goal and that quarterly and that yearly goal and, and really our larger goal in general. You know, I, I think that you hit it right on the head, both of you guys, because I think it's it's just a matter of, like Sean said, you're gonna make your mistakes, and you just gotta learn from it. Um, and to me, write it down. Okay, you know what? Uh, instead of making this offer, I made that offer. Okay, now I know that maybe I gotta restructure or something. And the same thing, what you said on them. You know, you got the education, but eventually, you know, write down your goals, take a step by step approach to it, and at least take action. Yeah, because no matter what, you can have all the education you want, guys, and you know this. But if you don't take action, it's, it's, to me, it's worthless. Like I said, yeah. you become a hoarder of education. So for you, for you gentlemen, um, one of the questions uh, I was asked to ask you guys is how did you guys meet? And what was it about you two guys, each of your personalities, that you said this could work together, that we could definitely partner up and make our mark in real estate? Either one, you can start. It doesn't matter who. <laughs> All right. Um, we actually met in a real estate class. Ah, perfect. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, um, Arnold was actually uh, talking about his insurance product that um, that he that he was selling at the time, and 
he offered me the insurance, I already had it. Right. You know, and he's like, wow, very few people that I know uh, that I come across even know about this for you to for you to have it. That's great. And uh, we started working together like that and we've become uh, the closest of friends. And, um, you know, we, we've gotten so close. I, he actually uh, invited me to be a part of his wedding. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Sean was best man at the wedding. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, so. You guys know each other, f what? Uh, I don't want to even speculate. How long you guys know each other? Since about 2000, uh, late 2010, maybe early 2011, I believe. So about nine, 10 years. Okay, I mean, that's yeah. definitely a, a long enough time to build a relationship. Yeah. And, and so you guys had the same goal in mind that it was, that it it was going to be real estate. Yeah. You go first. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually um, was involved, which I still am in my insurance uh, business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I market uh, legal shield products to companies, uh, to the, their employees and uh, grown a very successful business. And that that was where I wanted to be uh, just an entrepreneur. And I, I told you those two industries that I saw while working at Chase was insurance and real estate. Yeah. So, um, you know, with Sean, we actually spoke early on to, to uh, as far as what we can do, how we can work together, how we can build together. We've uh, read a ton of books and got our, our education on together and sure. really has been, uh, we've been mentoring each other in many ways over the years in terms of how to, uh, first of all, how to get your mind right so that you can do things like this. It's a science to anything. There, there's a, a, a logical way of going about any area of uh, being an entrepreneur, whether it's real estate, insurance, or uh, wholesale deals, or anything else. Uh, there is a, a system that you can use, but at, to, in order to use that system, you have to get your mind right. So we've read um, pro books that outside of real estate, probably about uh, 30 to 40 books together uh, mm -hmm. that we've gone back and forth just to make sure that uh, over time that we know uh, the inner thoughts of, of each other's minds. And just to, to restate that, we know that we are great business partners together and how we complement each other because uh, he knows the same information I know. We've read the same books. We've attended similar seminars. So we understand uh, the, the deeper level of uh, the knowledge that we have and the the thought process that we go through. So when it comes to deals, for example, Sean is is in charge of our sales and rehab, okay. and I know how he thinks, and I trust him one hundred percent because of the time that we have together and the courses that we've studied. Right. Uh, and I'm I take care of the marketing and I take care of the acquisitions, and he trusts me a hundred percent on. Um, my research that I do and we both go back and forth and check each other's work but at the same time there's trust there because of the time that we've had together wow that's amazing I, I, and, and just and to uh yeah, no, I'm no, sorry no, just no. to piggyback off of uh what Arnold was saying as far as uh, us going back and forth over each other's uh work you know um uh one of the first projects that we got into you know I like I I'm, I'm the guy that chases the butterflies it's like oh wow <laughs> It's a butterfly. Wait, I'm sorry. What were we talking about? You know, <laughs> and uh, he's the more grounded one. So if I see a project, initially, I'm I'm looking at what the value is and what the repair budget is and how quickly we can get into this project. Okay. And then I'll run it over to him. And he's like, wait a second. What research did you do to come to this value? Because this area may be worth this, but only on this type of property on this size lot. Okay. You know, and, and uh, seeing as we're working in Nassau County, there's a lot of things that go uh, in that are involved in uh, uh, properly evaluating a property as opposed to in New York City. Like in in Brooklyn, it's like, look, if you have a house, a single family, it's going to it's going to be worth minimum 450. Yeah. Right. But in Nassau County, if you don't have the right size lot, if you don't have the right uh, 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 school zone, if your taxes are too high, your property's, your property's just going to sit there, right. you know, and yeah. these are, these are a few of the things that, you know, I chased a butterfly. It's a pretty house. Let's go check it out. And he's like, wait a second. 
<laughs> let's let's do the research first. Let's do the research properly. So that's one of the major major things as far as uh, our partnership and working together. That I'm 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 glad I have him as a partner. No, hey, listen, I I think you do need someone to keep you grounded because, uh, like for me, uh, it took me years, guys, to finally get my first deal because um, I was chasing you know the shiny object. You know, and I, I even did a podcast on that. I'm like, listen, don't be like me. Stick, stick, stick to one niche and then perfect it. And then mm -hmm. you move on because I wanted to do wholesaling. Then I wanted to do fix and flip and tax liens and buy and hold. It was all over the place until I think when we talked a few, few weeks ago um, where I said, you know what, owner financing, creative financing, and it just hit me. That's what I want to do. And, you know, since 2017, that's what I've been doing. Just concentrating on that, learning more as in that particular subject so I could get better, make, you know, mm -hmm. structure offers. And I just think we get this, some of us get the shiny object syndrome and that just slows us down. And all of a sudden years go by and you're like, wait a minute, I'm still back at ground zero because I haven't done anything. So, yeah. um, so when you, so I want to touch base on your first property that you bought. Um, was that a single family? Yeah. So it was a, yeah. I'm sorry. So how did you find it? How did you fund it? Um, what was, if you give us a couple of steps, especially for the new investor that's looking to get in and, you know, the first thing they tell, tell them that I've been hearing lately now is no start wholesaling. Um, it seems like nobody wants to do buy and hold anymore. It's just, we, and you, you've been to these events. We can meet 20 people and 19 are going to be wholesalers. Yeah. <laughs> You know? Wholesalers with nothing to wholesale except someone else's wholesale. Yeah, so they're gonna <laughs> uh, what they call it, a daisy chain, daisy yep. chain. Yeah. So yeah. So Sean, touch base on your on your, like your first deal and how did you get it? How did you where did you find it? Okay, well, um, I have a few different firsts. Um, my okay. first, <laughs> my very first uh, real estate uh, transaction was um, a friend of mine introduced me to someone else who needed uh their mortgage refinanced okay. and so he asked me if i would refinance it for them you know under under my credit so we did it and uh it was fine for the first two years or so and this was right in the 0506 uh era when um when they'd give you a mortgage if you could fog a mirror yeah, I remember <laughs> yeah. right even if you couldn't fog a mirror they still give, you know, do their best to get you a mortgage. Exactly, yeah. Right. And uh, so for the first uh, two years, it was great. And um, the uh, the owner was paying the, paying the mortgage. So I got the, the benefit of the mortgage tax um, so that I could claim it. I got a five-figure um, tax refund, mm. right? A couple, for the first few uh, years, I've, you know, I was accustomed to getting maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks back from taxes. I got over ten thousand dollars back two years in a row. Wow. So the first year, I took that uh, tax refund and I purchased a rental property okay. in uh, in uh, upstate New York. The second year, I did the exact same thing. The third year, I did the exact same thing, and then by the fourth year, they'd stopped paying, and I had to do a short sale. Wow. Okay. But in doing the short sale, I invested heavily into my education and in investing in my education, that's how I met my partner. Right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So when, so it was through just a connection that you knew and somebody knew you and says, Hey, can you help out? And, and yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, mean, I always say it, it's, it's who, you know, you know, it's not yeah. what you know, but it's, uh, eventually it comes down to who, you know, so yeah. Arnhem, like you, did, was your, did you get your own property on your, on your own or did, or that was a partnership with, with Sean? No, it was uh, with a partnership with Sean. We uh, have, we've done a lot of due diligence and all throughout Nassau County, Queens and Brooklyn. And uh, we knew what we wanted. We right. knew the area we wanted. And uh, you, you know, it's, it's just sometimes as simple as calling up a agent and saying, Hey, I'm interested in this property. Uh, in, in the uh, one that I'm thinking about right now with, with Sean, uh, you know, I contacted the agent. He said, no, the place isn't available. And I asked him, hey, do you have anything else? And he said, yeah, I have a house. It's, it's, it needs a full gut. Uh, I don't think you'll be interested. And I said, yes, please tell me more. <laughs> you know, walls and floors and windows are optional. So uh, let me see it. Sean and I took a, a ride over the, to check it out. It was beautiful in the sense that it needed a lot of work. 
And, uh, you know, we, we put in the offer, it was accepted. And uh, I think on that deal, we were going to, uh, to rehab and sell it, but uh, the contractor that we decided to work with, uh, he said, you know what, I'm working at another house around the corner, which uh, conveniently enough, it was a house that we were comping uh, during our research. Mm-hmm. So I found a whole list of houses that would be good comps, drove up there and the, the uh, contractor said, uh, yeah, I'd be happy to check out your house and maybe we can do some work. And he said, you know what, how much uh, can I buy this from you? Because I would love to uh, build this up myself. So we did a wholesale deal on that one and that generated uh, close to about $35,000 on, you know, one transaction from one phone call. Amazing. Wow. So that was your first transaction where you wanted to buy the property, but somebody says, Hey, I'll take it off your hands. And then you guys just flip the contract. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it it was that simple, but at the same time, we did have to put in a lot of work in finding the, 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 property and finding the area, knowing the area, and also knowing the comps. If we had never uh, looked up the comps and drove the comps, we would have never found the contractor. Wow. So yeah. it's, it's sometimes it's it that feels, extra step. Yeah. yeah, it feels like a serendipity, but when you are prepared and you have the, the right opportunity, sometimes the, the, the more prepared I am, the luckier I get, you know, you, right. you heard that before. Yeah, that and, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we've got really lucky on, on that deal uh, by itself. So, uh, yeah, sorry, no, no, uh, sorry. Uh, just to go back in on that deal, he said we got lucky. No, the contractor got lucky because <laughs> uh, there was a huge garage and it had a, uh, a padlock on it and we didn't have the key for the padlock. Right. And so I went by after uh, they got the house and they started doing the demo. I looked in the garage. There was a freaking boat. <laughs> boat? <laughs> a boat. In, in, what I mean, in the house? In the garage. Oh, in the garage. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, it was, so, it was a, uh, a detached garage. Okay, yeah. okay. It was a wow. huge one detached. as well. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, yeah. you had, that's a, a boat in there. So, a boat okay. on the trailer. <laughs> Jesus. Well, listen, I, I mean, t- listen, you made 35000 on your first deal together. That, I mean, that's a great start. And that'll definitely give you incentive. Like, hey, if we do this, we could do more. So... So when you guys look for deals, um, and, and, I, and I saw on your website that you guys are in the city, but um, did I read right? You also do Houston, uh, or was that – do you do another city or no? Brooklyn, Queens, Brooklyn. and Nassau okay. County. Brooklyn, Queens, and – okay. So if you're looking for a single family or multifamily, like what are your steps? Like for a new, for a new investor, they want to get into, let's say, a duplex or a triplex. What would you suggest? Like, what would be the step-by-step process? But these guys don't have the money. So, you know, should they use their credit? Should they partner? You know, you guys are the experts in this this field. So both of you guys, touch base on that. Sure. I'll uh, start off with this one. Uh, for So if the goal is to purchase a property, a duplex, a triplex, whatever the case is, uh, first of all, you have to know your marketplace. So if my goal is to own a property in Queens, let's say a, a duplex in Queens, I need to find out what those properties are selling for. I, have, I, I cannot stress enough, you have to know your numbers. Right. Uh, if you don't know um, in this zip code what the ARV is of, of properties uh, in this zip code uh, based on what you're looking for. So if I'm, for example, if I'm looking for a, um, a single family home, in Queens, and I know the zip code, I've, I've done maps where I draw out the colors on the ARV for that area. Right. So I know houses okay. sell from three hundred dollars to $400,000 in this area, but the, the, a couple blocks over, it may sell for uh, five to 600000 And you have to know your marketplace first. Once you know the marketplace, now you can start to make the connections. Uh, you will start to find the, uh, just by driving through the area, or walking through the area, you'll find uh, real estate agents who are selling houses in that area. It's a good idea to connect with them because your team matters. They will find you the deals when you can't find them yourself. So I would say definitely know your area, know what school zones you're in and and how that affects the market price, know the zip codes, know 
uh, the transitional zones of the area. You really have to know your marketplace and know your numbers. Mm -hmm. That is the most important part because once you find a really good deal, you can um, buy it for anywhere from 30 to 50% is what we look to purchase properties at mm -hmm. uh, all from the ARV. Um, once you find a property, now the money is easy because, and I say that, I don't mean to, uh, to well, I just wanna say, when you have a great deal, people recognize you have a great deal. Okay. If I come to you and I have a, a property and I'm buying it for $100,000, and you know it sells for 400,000 when it's fixed and it only needs 100,000 in work, that sounds like a pretty good deal. And you will find people to invest with you or you can um, JV uh, and that's always an option. You can use your credit cards, you can use anything. When you have a great deal, because you know your numbers, because you've done your research, your due diligence, you will find the money. The money is the easiest thing to get. Okay. Wow, okay, I mean, that, that definitely enlightens me up a little bit because you know uh, for both of you guys you know what i hear is always oh you know i can find a deal but the money's not there but it, what you said on them if you find a deal it's it's you could get it for 100 hundred thousand in repairs but it's worth 400 450 somebody will see that hey wait a minute this is a good spread here okay so it definitely depends on the deal now sean we talked yeah. about with the rehab portion of it now how do you de determine the rehab so let's say, I mean, you know, you see like the house you, you guys found that pretty much could have been a tear down and, and built it back up or, you know, maybe the foundation was in excellent shape, but all you got to do now is build the walls around it. How do you determine the, you know, your part, the rehab budget? Um, experience. That's a, that's a tough question. Yeah, I know. I, I, I didn't mean to put you on the well, spot. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's uh, experience and also uh, 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 having good relationships with your contractors. Okay. Okay. So, um, first and foremost, you you are as good as your team is, right? So, your 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 contractor, you have to have a really good relationship with your contractor. And even if you don't, uh, even if you haven't uh, hired them for a job yet, if you've asked them to walk multiple properties with you, mm -hmm. buy them a cup of coffee. You know, uh, uh, take them out for lunch. You know do something to where they don't feel like you're wasting their time, yeah. you know? And, uh, and then ask them, Hey, I see this. What do you see? Okay. I see this price for this. What price do you see? Mm -hmm. You know? And, uh, and also, you know, so this way you get an idea of, okay, are you charging me just for labor? Or are you throwing the materials in that price? Okay. If, if I buy the material, can I, get just the price on the labor right. would you be okay picking up the material if i pick if i pick out the material you know or should i have the material delivered to the house you know you you, you always try to work in, uh, uh with your contractors yeah. to do the best to save money for your project okay. and um and once you you uh do that then you're it's off to the races as far as picking out your materials listen if you're just getting started the best thing you can do, especially as a rehabber, is get a, a Home Depot or Lowe's or wh whichever big, big box um, uh, c construction supply uh, house is near you. Yeah. Just grab, just get a, a card from those, from those guys because this way you get to float the expenses on your rehab versus coming out of your pocket and paying cash. So mm -hmm. if you have, let's say uh, on our last project, we spent roughly, I think about... Uh, 25,000 on materials. Okay. Right? Now, we have a Home Depot card. Right? So we can pay the 25,000 in materials and pay it back $300 a month until the property sells and then just pay it all off. Right. Or we can have we have to have $25,000 cash. Right. So would that type of money be borrowed also from a private lender or you would would prefer either the credit card or your cash. Um, can, a, can, can a private lender help out in that situation? Um, as oh, far as you, private- would you, would you prefer it, I'm saying, let's say for rehab, for the rehab of a property? For the rehab, I wanna keep as much cash on hand as possible gotcha. because of change orders, because things may not work out uh, uh, the way that you anticipate them. Right. So you wanna have as much cash as possible. Mm -hmm. So this okay. way, 
um, you know, let's say uh, uh, like what's going on with us right now, there are major delays going on in construction. We, we, uh, we have delays on getting our permits for our plumbing. We have delays on getting our countertops. We have delays on getting our permit for our, uh, we, we usually convert from gas, uh, from oil to natural gas. Right. And that's a process that takes a couple of, uh, usually maybe two weeks. Right now we're on our second month because of the uh, coronavirus. Yeah, I was so, going to ask you that, like, how is your business being affected by the, by the pandemic? Okay. And you just, with yeah. Because I want well, to touch well, base on that anyway. But, yeah, God, please. Yeah, so um, you always want to have as much cash on hand as possible because imagine we spent all uh, 25000 plus paying our contractor another twenty five. that's 50000 cash, without, um, without utilizing any credit. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, mm -hmm. if anything comes up, then we still have to come up with the remaining cash or, uh, or even – um, you know, if, if anything happens, we have to have that cash on hand as far as opposed to putting it on, on a credit card, preferably a big box store card, or even if you're going to use a credit card, use a credit card, you get points on. Right. Right. Um, and, uh, uh, so this way you can float the expense as opposed to paying 25,000 altogether. You can pay 500 this month, 500 next month, 500. And when the property sells, you just pay it off out of the proceeds. Right. Okay. No. It's or it, it should have been accounted for anyway when you did your numbers. Right. Yeah. And you know, and it's it's what I'm hearing is definitely like what Arnhem says is you got to know your numbers. And the same thing you said, Sean, is you got to know your numbers before you get in. So yeah. with with what's happening now, obviously everything is slowing down. Eventually, God willing, everything will pick up. Um. So for the newbie investor. What would you suggest they do, though? I mean, should they get into single family? Should they buy and hold at the beginning? I mean, that's a tough question because I guess it depends on their situation. But I'm always hearing wholesaling, wholesaling, wholesaling. And I think in my – I'm just going by what I've gone through and what some of my friends have told me. That's a tough sell because you're trying to talk a seller down to 50, 60 cents on the dollar, if that. Uh, and then you got to – and I'm pretty sure you could find the buyer, but it's always – talking to the seller and trying to lowball him. Um, what do you guys feel about that? So I, I answer that uh, since I work with most of the sellers and that we aren't trying to lowball anybody. Right. We, that's not how we do business. We yeah. want to make sure that it's a win, win, win for everybody, for our contractors, for our agents, for the seller, for us. We want to make sure that uh, we, we bring some integrity to the marketplace. Right. Uh, so when it comes down to wholesaling, uh, again, uh, it's, it's about the numbers. If you find a deal uh, and you know the area, you know what it's going to sell for, uh, like the deal that we had, uh, once we showed the contractor what the numbers were and he knew his numbers as well, it was, hey, uh, let's wrap this up and sign the paperwork and we're good. Right. So it's, it's not difficult to wholesale when you know your numbers. We've had um, wholesalers contact us and say, hey, I got a house for 300000 It needs 50000 in repair budget uh, in repair, and you can sell it for um, four hundred. dollars That's, that's $50,000 for you. But they don't understand you have buy costs. <laughs> you have sell costs. You have uh, your attorneys. You have... Uh, hold costs. You have so many other uh, costs associated with it. And plus I got to get paid. So <laughs> it's, it's, once you know your numbers, it makes everything easier. If a homeowner calls me up and say, Hey, I have this property. The first thing I do is take the information about the property. Right. Uh, where's the property located? How many bathrooms, bedrooms, if they were to, uh, let's say if we were to give them $50,000, what's the first thing they would do internally for the house uh, to fix it and update it? And sometimes we would get things back like, hey, I would throw in a new bathroom. I would update the kitchen uh, because they know that things um, could use a facelift. Right. So we want to know that up front. We want to know about what the uh, repair budget looks like uh, for them or what the repairs needed. Mm -hmm. We want to know about um, the roof or leaks, plumbing, all of the major things that can cost us a lot of money. And we want to know um, why they're selling. What's, what are they looking for? And when you can solve other people's problems, give them more value than their money is worth, yeah. then they, they will sell to you all day, every day. So it's sometimes a matter of 
Uh, do you need someone to help you move? Are you looking for an apartment after you leave out of here? How can we help you out? Uh, are you, where else are you looking to buy? Maybe we have an agent that can help you buy when you're done selling here. So it, bring a lot of value is what I'm saying and know yeah. your numbers. Okay. Uh, Sean, you want to add to that or you're good? <laughs> um, yeah. Also, I wanted to say, uh, uh, you know, as I said, you, you are as strong as your team is, right? You know, and, let me to cut you off. Yeah. So, because this is important because you guys have talked about this, your, the team part. If you go, if someone's starting out, yeah. what should they look for first? I, let's touch base on that because I yeah. think it's important, and, and especially like you guys have been touching on that, uh, building a team. Can you say what what are the components of the team? Like, what would you need? And and I e the easy way to find them, obviously, is through networking, word of mouth, and all that. But like building the team, what is the first couple of people that you need on the team? Um. Number one, you need an investor-friendly real estate agent. Okay. Right? To me, that's um, the toughest one to find. That's just my Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, uh, because uh, a lot of times you get these people who call themselves investors and they'll go and they'll have uh, a real estate agent show them 100 houses, you know, in person. When, as, an, as a true investor, I don't need to see the house. I just need to know the numbers. Right. I just need to know what's the address. How much do you want for it? I can figure the rest out on my own. Mm -hmm. And if I can't, I'll ask you to send me some more information. Right. You know, um, and uh, first and foremost, an investor-friendly real estate agent. And second most important person, your real estate attorney. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Our guy. I want to touch on that. Yeah. Where would you find an investor-friendly attorney? Like where, I mean, do you go to LinkedIn? Again, this is networking, word of mouth. That to me, I agree with you guys. Besides the, the investor friendly agent, an investor friendly attorney that knows the ins and out of closings, and, and I mean, you know, we could yeah. go the, the long list of real estate uh, closings that we need, whether it's creative financing or just the conventional way. Yeah. Well, on, first, where, of where do we find that? <laughs> where do we find these guys? <laughs> well, um, we found ours uh, uh, through a referral. Okay. Um, because uh, we actually uh, used to run a, um, a networking event for professionals. And one of the uh, professionals who was uh, in the, in, on the team um, in the uh, event, he was an attorney and he did uh, contract law for uh, large corporations. So when I was doing my transactions, I asked him for a uh, real estate attorney. He referred me to, one, to uh, two of his guys. One guy's based in Pennsylvania. The other guy's based in Long Island. Okay. The guy in Long Island, that's a guy. He is a miracle worker. Yeah. He, yeah. He, uh, he did, he, our wholesale deal. Yeah. He did all the paperwork because the buyer's attorney, uh, is also a, a CPA and he was too busy with the upcoming tax season to do any work for his client. So uh, our guy did all the work, Right. you know, and, um, and, uh, uh, but to find one, just ask around, you have to ask, uh, uh, investors, Ask contractors, ask title professionals, especially. Oh, okay. And real estate agents. Right. Okay. Good point. Okay. And, I like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also want to add in if you're just getting started out, um, you, you may have some questions, just general questions that you need answered and don't know where to turn. So that's where the insurance uh, services that I was telling Sean about the when we first shield? met, uh, yeah. of how you can find a great attorney uh, is through a company called Legal Shield. And what they have is, is pretty much a system that works like health insurance where you can get access to the hospitals and doctors because you have health insurance. You don't have to worry about the high cost. With this service, it's getting access to entire law firms all across the country. And no matter where you are, you can speak to a lawyer who specializes in real estate or any other area of law to help you out and get your questions answered, write letters for you, make phone calls for you, all types of things. So. I would say if someone is just starting out, uh, they, they should absolutely look into that. And actually, I, I call my lawyers all the time, even now, when we don't want to contact our primary lawyer for additional information, we just contact uh, Legal Shield, and they definitely supply us with some great information. Would they, would they work on contracts for you too, or that, or more than yeah. more of, oh, they do. So, they, for, a new, so for a new investor, 
go to Legal Shield, LegalShield.com. We'll no, they will go to Arnum, okay. A-R-N-U-M dot le- we are legal shield dot com. That's Arnum yeah. dot we are legal shield dot com, and they will, can enroll right there. Okay, and uh, they can speak to a lawyer right away. Okay, no, because that's good, especially if someone's starting out and may, and they might not have a budget for a four or five figure lawyer. Um, and this is more cost effective, at least for the, you know, for a newbie investor, is this more cost effective? Oh, absolutely. We're talking about, uh, less than $24 a month or so, about 20, yeah, about $24.95 per month. And they, they're, they have unlimited access uh, for their whole family for, for any legal matter whatsoever. It's, it's amazing. Okay. I've heard of legal shoot, but I didn't know the, the gist of it until you explained it. Definitely. And we'll put that on the show notes, everybody. This way you could um, touch base with, uh, with Arnhem on that. Um, so we, what's happening now with the pandemic and everything is slowing down? Hopefully, like I said, everything will pick up. What are your future plans uh, going forward? You know, like what? I know it's hard to predict, but is there any goals you're looking to achieve in the next, let's say, from June on or or in 2021, uh, again, I know that's hard, but I like to ask these questions because some people are like, yeah, you know, we want to do this, that, you know, how about you guys? Well, uh, yeah, I, I'll start out. I uh, see that I put you guys on the spot. <laughs> no, no, it, it's just fine. Uh, Sean and I talk about this nearly every day. Uh, we're, yeah. we're really excited right now in terms yeah. of what's happening in the marketplace uh, for real estate because uh, this times like this really get the other companies that may not have been doing well yeah. or may not have been doing good business. It moves them out and open up the floodgates for companies like ours who, uh, who are, are hungry, who have their knowledge, who are safe in their investments. They're not, we're not speculators. Uh, so we are excited to what, what is to happen in real estate because there's abundance of opportunity. Uh, I know Sean likes to say all the time, wealth doesn't disappear. It just gets transferred. Right. I love that. <laughs> so we, we um, are really looking at uh, multiple ways of, of earning. Uh, we, we we're looking at uh, wholesale deals, of course, because if we can find the deals, they're out there. We can supply uh, good investors who want deals. Mm-hmm. We are looking at, um, in addition to that, we're looking at uh helping people with probates, dealing with that, that, that can be stressful, especially now and across the country, we have tens of thousands of people who passed away. So probate uh, is an area that we're looking at, okay. uh, as well as pre foreclosures, helping those in need. Uh, and, and again, it's the bill value. It's not to, uh, to take from anybody. We are giving people opportunities that they may not know even exist. Yeah. So we're educating, we are, um, and, and building community. So our goal, uh, I'm just talking about uh, 2020 right now is what I've been talking sure, about, sure, 2020. Sure. But in the future, we, we're, our goal is to bring the world amazing communities where families can feel at peace and, and grow because they have amazing, uh, affordable homes to live in that's safe. So we're, we're also looking into multifamily units um, four families and under, as well as we eventually within the next few years, we are looking at hundred units and more. Right. So we are looking into the larger ones across the country, not in New York city. The, the price is too much. Cap rate is too low. Yeah, I don't blame uh, you. So we are looking at hundred units and we are doing our investigations right now to where, uh, we want to invest, uh, for those larger deals. Okay. No, it sounds good. I mean, you know, and I wanted to, uh, touch and and i know we're going to run short on time but finding the deals obviously again you know do you use a realtor i mean you don't have to give your secrets but would you rely on a realtor or or online sources to look for your deals um do you do driving for dollars walking for dollars uh now I'm hearing people doing Google Drive. In other words, they take the map and then just go around neighborhoods. I'm like, I don't know how reliable is that? I mean, you know, those pictures could be three to five years old for what I've heard. But um, if you could, guys could touch base on that, it's always like where to find the deals because people say, oh, there's no deals out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, how can you, what, what, would, what would you say? The great thing is in real estate, there are no secrets. <laughs> 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 you just really... 
you just really have to master the basics. So uh, wh wherever you feel as though uh, you're most excited about, go that way. Right. So I, I know you do a lot of creative deals right. and, um, you know, same way you find your properties. If you're speaking with agents, you're cold calling, whatever you like most, go with that and get better at it. Mm -hmm. So once you get really good at a certain niche, a certain area, uh, starting out, uh, whether it's contacting 10 agents every day, uh, whether it's contacting 10 uh, for sale by owners every day, right. whether you're doing the Google Drive, whether you're doing direct mail, if no matter what you do, squeeze pages, there's websites, there's driving for dollars, walking for dollars. Actually, I was walking around the neighborhood uh, just yesterday with my wife and we saw a property that was vacant and I took a photo of it. I'm going to look it up and uh, see w how can I, uh, you know, find that property's owner and, and possibly buy it. So yeah. uh, there, there are no secrets. I, I say just master one area and then you can move on from there and master another. And before you know it, these skills build upon each other and you become amazing at finding properties. But the key to it is master one at a time. Don't try to do everything because you're going to be chasing two rabbits across a field going opposite direction. So no, I agree. find one way of, of finding deals and get really good at that way of doing it. Yeah, no, and, and, and there's, uh, and Sean, I want you to um, touch on that also. Yep. Because you know what, I, I, you know, people always say, and I'm talking about the people that I've talked to, oh, there's no deals, there. but it's like, I'm wondering where are they looking? If you're looking at Craigslist only, well, yeah, maybe you might not find anything. <laughs> But there's other uh, uh, reliable sources. I, I, I would say, you know, there's listsource.com. Don't, don't discount Zillow, uh, Craigslist, real estate agents, like you said. Um, I mean, to me, they're like right there, the source. If, like you guys said, if you find an investor-friendly realtor, my God, they're your source. They're going to yeah. find off-market deals and, um, you know, uh, maybe like for me, creative financing. I mean, that's how I found my first property in, in Pennsylvania. I just called a realtor and I gave him the rundown what I wanted to do. And he said, yeah, we could do that. And <laughs> boom, we were off to the races. So Sean, touch uh, yeah. based on that. Uh, if you could follow up with what Sean said and I said yeah. about finding deals, especially in this day and age with, with, with the internet. Well, I'm going to give you a good old fashioned way to find properties. Okay. Local newspapers. Ah, okay. That one yeah. I haven't heard in a long time. Right. You, you know, you are where, whatever neighborhood you're in, especially in New York City, there's a local newspaper. Right. Um, you just take the local newspaper, you go straight to the classified sections, go straight to the real estate sections and also go into the um, when you're in the classified, look towards the for, they, they a lot of them show uh, foreclosures. OK, so you can get auction dates. Mm -hmm. So this way you can contact uh, uh, people who are going through foreclosure. A lot of people, they may have their, you know, they may do the ostrich and stick their head in the sand so that they don't want to deal with it. And this mm -hmm. is your chance to get in front of that person. Right. Um, another way is to, uh, like Arnim said, master one specific niche. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of websites that show uh, uh, that, that have properties and not all those websites have the same properties. Right. right? No, I like a great, uh, that's, that's a great add on. Yeah. And here's the, 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 the one way that we know that is 100% foolproof. If your agent brings you a property, give it back to them to sell immediately. And they're going to bring you back more properties. I heard mm -hmm. that. Yeah, definitely. So, let, them, let them touch commission on both sides. Yep. Yeah, I heard that yep. too. Yeah, yeah. The agent I had in, in uh, Pennsylvania, um, I did that. They brought yeah. it a bank and I said, hey, you can sell it for me and like you said, they jumped right on it. Gentlemen, yep. listen, I could talk to you guys for another hour. <laughs> yeah. I know you guys are busy. Arnum and Sean, thank you so much for being on, on today's Peer-to-Peer -peer Real Estate Show. If they want to find you guys, what's the best way? Arnum, you go first. Blockbuilderproperties.com. You can also follow us on Instagram block, at blockbuilderproperties. Uh, that, that's the easiest way to contact us, to follow up. Even if someone says, hey, I want to sell, I want to work with you guys. Uh, we even have a, um, information or a free ebook on, on our website. So you can go there, find an ebook, learn about selling properties, learn a lot more information, uh, all through the website. Okay. Sounds good. Sure. And also, also we have a, uh, you can contact us via, uh, uh, Twitter okay. at block builder properties as well. 
And also, um, we have a phone number. Okay. It's simple as I don't know what. Uh, 929 Block 92. Sounds good to me. Well, gentlemen, again, thank you so much for being on Pay to Pay Real Estate. I really, really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll get to see each other at the, at the next Flippers and In Flippers person? Event. Yeah, it might be six months from now, but who knows, you know? Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, Will. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, bye-bye. Will. Well, everyone, that was Rashawn Thrower and Arnold Wapples Jr. from BlockBuilderProperties.com. That's BlockBuilderProperties.com. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being on today's peer-to-peer real estate show. You can find me at peer-to-peerrealestate.com. That's peer to number two, peerrealestate.com. Check out our shows, check out our resource page, and our blog. Also, guys, if you go to iTunes, look for us on peer-to-peer real estate podcast. Please subscribe, leave a review, tell us how we can make this show better. And before I go, guys, there's a couple more things. Please do not give up on your dreams. Fight for it, guard it, protect it. Don't let anyone talk you out of what you want to do. And I really believe if you keep the momentum going, good things will happen. Anyway, on behalf of Peer to Peer Real Estate Show, I'm William Morales. Until next time, have a great day, everybody, and stay safe. Thanks. Bye-bye.